All right, guys, let's get started. So uh, I welcome you all to the Close.io uh, webinar today, uh, Close More Deals with Email. I'm super excited about uh, today's webinar. Uh, the audience is pretty awesome. Some really, you know, really amazing people uh, that have come into the session today. Um, we're going to be talking about 40 minutes uh, all about sales email and how to excel with email in sales. And then we're going to do a 20 minute Q&A session. Um, first, a little bit of background and, and context. So, you know, why do we care about email for salespeople and why do we know something about it? Um, so when we started as Elastic Sales, uh, we offered an outsourced sales team to venture-backed technology startups in Silicon Valley. And we've done sales for hundreds of venture-backed uh, tech companies here in Silicon Valley and sent, we probably sent millions and millions of sales emails. Um, actually, I, I would venture to say that you probably have received an email from an Elastic salesperson at one point or another. Um, so we really have, you know, firsthand experience on sending emails and improving emails and making email an, an integral part of your sales strategy. Um, because we had so much experience with email, and email was such a crucial part of how we would do sales for different technology companies. You know, when we started to build our own internal sales powerhouse to close.io, we knew that there was, you know, a lot of opportunities to build something amazing and integrate email really deeply into sales technology and sales tools. Um, so that's how, you know, we arrived at, at the way that email works today at close.io. So we deeply care about email. We know a lot about it. It's a crucial part of how we work and how we succeed. Um, today's seminar uh, will have a couple of key points. So we're going to start with the basics um, and you know what it takes for you to write amazing sales emails. Uh, we're going to talk about outbound emails as well as inbound emails. And then we're going to actually dive into real life examples of companies like HubSpot, Trunk Club. We're going to look at what other companies and companies that are incredibly successful, what emails do they send and how do they structure these and where are patterns that we can learn from. And then we're going to dive into the Q&A section. All right, let's get started. First of all, let me come out of the gate and tell you that you're not sending enough email. Um, you know, I can make that blank statement because 99% of the time I'm going to be right saying that to an entrepreneur, a VP of sales, a CEO. Your company is not sending enough email. Just bar none. If you look at, if you if you look at, you know, the most successful companies out there. Uh, you know, especially in SaaS and in technology companies like Salesforce, companies like HubSpot. You're going to be amazed by the sheer volume of email they send. And they send amazing, high-quality email, but they just send a lot of email. Once you sign up somewhere, once you go on a trial, once you download a white paper or an ebook or something from them, once they have your email and you've shown some level of interest, they're going to send you a lot of email because they know it takes a lot of communication effort to actually get the prospect at the right time to engage and then you know, start the sales process. Um, so, you know, if we can accomplish just one thing in this webinar is getting you to send just one more email to your leads, to your prospects, then this was a huge success. Just get into the mind frame that you need to start sending more emails. Um, why? Why are emails an effective tool, an important tool for sales? So, first of all, you know, there, there's all the obvious benefits, but it's important to step back and kind of realize that and look at it in the big picture. Last week, I talked about the phone being this breakthrough technology for salespeople, allowing them to go from local to global and have reach way beyond their location, as well as, you know, the productivity gains that, that the phone gave to, uh, you know, the sales industry. Um, the only other technological breakthrough that had as significant as an impact has been email. You know, email is one too many, so you can reach multiple people at the same time. It's asynchronous, so people can respond whenever they want, and you can send it whenever it works within your sales day in, in, in the most proactive brackets, and it's global in reach. Um, email is an amazing tool to do lead generation if you do outbound sales and to actually allow you to create a predictable stream of new leads, even if they don't come to you. Um, and also, email is the most effective tool for activation. So if people actually come to you inbound and they sign up and they request information, they contact you, you know, just because they showed interest at a given point in time doesn't mean that they're going to immediately respond when you want them to. So an email is an amazing tool to actually activate these people along the way. 
Um, it is a huge productivity saver. Uh, you know, you can schedule calls, schedule meetings via email, so you don't have to call people or show up. You know, and manage manage those in person, as well as follow up, which is a huge part, and we're going to dive into that in detail. And email can be a great tool for negotiate negotiations and even for closing deals. Um, so email is incredibly important and should be a core part of your sales strategy. Um, what kind of emails are we talking about here? Uh, so there's four key kind of emails that I want to talk about, and I want you to do all of them. And if you don't, add them to your repertoire, add them to the, the, the way that you do business. Obviously, all of us do personal email. Yeah? You send an email to another individual to communicate something. Um, but then there are uh, more automated emails, uh, drips. Drip emails are emails that are automated and event driven. And what I mean by that is that you can set up a, a frequency of emails and pre write them that are being sent out to people that, let's say, are on a free trial of your service or product and that are going through a specific pattern or have triggered certain events. So, so if I sign up for your trial, let's say, and I, you know, don't upload my picture, or, uh, you know, if it's Facebook, if I don't upload my picture, I can get a drip email from Facebook telling me that if I upload my picture, my friends will recognize me, my life is going to be more social, more fun. Or, you know, if, if it's some analytics tool, you know, which you would want to track as an event is, did the user that signed up for our analytics tool take the JavaScript piece of code and embed it into their website so they can actually get the analytics tool running? And if they haven't, you can trigger an automated email, a drip email that looks and reads like a personal email sent by you or sales rep of yours, um, but that are that is focused on people that are on the trial but haven't taken a crucial action. Um, or it could also be a, 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 an event that's triggered when somebody is exceptionally doing well. You know, in close eye of you close lots of deals, we might send you an automated drip email and, and congratulate you and, you know, um, point you to a couple of things you could do to even get more value out of Close.io. Um, so there's personal emails, there's drip emails that are event-driven and automated, then there's autoresponders. It's basically the same thing as drips, so you've automated the process, you've written all the emails already, but now it's not quite event-driven, so it doesn't, it doesn't really, it's not as intelligent to know what people have done before sending those emails but it's more a sequence of emails that are being sent. So, for instance, if somebody signs up for um, a white paper or an ebook, and you want to send that person, you know, an email thanking them, another email with the ebook, and a third email, you know, kind of pitching your service or product, that will be an autoresponder that you set up. Three emails, and the trigger event is somebody signs up here, and then they get email one on day one, email two on day two, and email three on day five, four or five or whatever it is, right? So you can kind of sequence out the emails. That's used usually for email courses, ebooks, white papers, and things like that. Uh, and then newsletters, right? So emails that all the people, all the contacts in your business are getting where you share news about your business. Um, all these are amazing opportunities to drive sales, drive leads into your funnel. You should take advantage of all of them. Having said that, quick plug, if you're not on our email course, the uh, Startup Sales Success email course, uh, make sure to go to close.io slash free sales course and sign up and get you know nine emails, nine emails that are nine distinct lessons for startup sales uh, over a period of 30 days to see see this kind of um, see drip emails in action. All right, so let's start with the basics, sales email basics. First of all, your number one step is that you need people to open your email, right? Doesn't matter how great, whatever it is that you write, how great the content of your email is, doesn't matter how beautiful your intentions are, if people don't open your email, your email never existed, right? And, and companies get this consistently wrong. They spend 20% of their time on the content of the email or 80% of their time on the content of the email and only 20% on the subject line of that email. I get emails every day from salespeople and from other founders um, that tell me, hey, here are the emails that we're sending to our customers or our leads. Can you give us feedback? And they don't even include the subject lines. And I reply to them and say, no, I can't give you feedback. And they, they ask me why. And I say, because you didn't include the most important thing, which is a subject line, which is at first the only thing I care about. You need to focus on the subject line. Give it 80% of your attention and focus. It's, you know, if you send out an email to 100 people, chances are if you're doing really well and you've written a great subject line, 
30 people are going to uh, you know, open that email and read it. Only 30 out of 100. If you write a shitty subject line, you might just get two people or five people to open it. Do you get how significant this is percentage-wise in terms of like what the impact is going to be of your email? The subject line is key. Your step number one, the basis here is that the person that receives your email needs to open it, needs to feel compelled to open it. What can we do to make that happen? Well, first of all, you need to write like a human being. No caps, no marketing speak. If the subject line reads like it's not sent to me personally from another human being, the odds of me opening that email go dramatically down. So it needs to read like an email that was written by one human being sent to me personally. That's going to increase open rates of your emails dramatically. Um, it needs to be personal. So, you know, using names is a good idea. Um, a lot of times question marks, uh, you know, you, you need to, to, to test that asking people questions, right? So a, a generic market email would never have a subject line that reads, um, want to talk question mark, right? Want to talk question mark is a subject line that you expect from another human being directed to you, right? So, and that, that subject line will get a pretty big open rate, uh, pretty significant open rate. Um, if you write a, a subject line that's like 10 reasons why our tool will help you get better SEO and increase your revenue, nobody will ever want to open that email because it's clear that this is a marketing email sent to millions of people potentially. I don't want to be bothered by that. Um, if you can, you know, and this is a, the last two, two points are, are kind of contradicting each other, um, but they're still good. One is that if you can, you want to raise my curiosity. You want to make me go, hmm, who is this? Um, but at the same time, it's a fine line because you don't want to be too gimmicky because you want to deliver in the content of your email what you promised me in the subject line, right? If subject line and content of email are too far away from each other, too disconnected, I'm going to be pissed, right? So you can't write like, you know, hey, greetings from your grandmother, and then in the email be like, hey, I'm glad you opened the, the, the email. You know, this has nothing to do with your grandmother, but uh, here's our SEO tool and you should sign up for it. If I feel tricked, if I feel taken advantage of, you're not going to get a good response. Yeah, you got a great open rate, but nobody will want to respond. So you need to walk a fine line. And when you look at your subject lines, you need to kind of relate to or deliver what you promise uh, firsthand. Um, all right, so uh, one, one quick example, just because it, it peaked in, in my mind. So one great subject line that I've seen um, being used in the past was that somebody in their follow-up would write, um, I'm disappointed, uh, we couldn't connect. And whenever I, I parse my email inbox and I see the word disappointed, it gets my full attention because I'm, you know, I'm a founder, I'm a CEO. I want to, you know, is a customer disappointed? Did we fuck something up? Did we screw somebody? Like, what is this? So whenever I see disappointed, it's a pretty strong word. It gets all my attention. And, you know, disappointed, the, the great thing is that the guys didn't just send an email that said, um, I'm disappointed which would have gotten me to open it immediately and be like, what is this about? But they wrote, I'm disappointed we couldn't connect. So it was, you know, it, it, it walked that fine line really well between raising my curiosity and getting all my attention, but still being honest because they are, they are kind of hinting that they've tried to get in touch with me and I haven't responded yet. And I definitely opened that email because I wanted to, wanted to know more. Um, so first of all, you get people to open open your email, right? That's kind of the name of the game. Get them to read your subject line and feel compelled to know more. Step number two is to actually now get them to read your content, right? Read the email. Uh, and there, there's just a couple of really important and key, key basic facts you need to keep uh, in mind. Number one, keep it, in, keep it personal and brief, right? Respect the reader's time and show them that you are also respecting your own time and you're a busy individual and your company really has something of value to add. So, you know, I like to keep my emails short, less than two paragraphs or three at max. Sometimes a longer email might work, but in general, you want to keep it really brief and you want to keep it personal. It should read and look like it comes from a human being. No HTML if you can uh, avoid it. No big graphics. Um, nothing that's signed by the team. Always make it personal. Always make it come from a personal email address, not from a no reply at or team at or contact at company, but, you know, your name at. Um, and then number two, if you can, if, especially when you write emails to people that don't know what the context is, um, make sure you keep a simple structure, right? So first of all, you need to tell me who you are. If like 
this goes really step by step. If I don't know who you are, I will not continue reading. I'm going to give you like your subject line made me open the email. Now, as quickly as possible, I need to get the minimal viable context to decide to keep reading. So first, tell me, who are you? Second, tell me, why should I keep reading this? Like, what's your promise of value? What are you telling me that I'm going to get out of this? And then demonstrate that value or explain it to me really clearly. If you can, at this point, you know, if you got me that far in the email, now I'm thinking, now I will challenge the value proposition that you're offering. If you tell me, you know, our SEO service will increase your rankings by 10,000%, you know, or whatever, will increase your traffic by 40% a month. My next, my next response as a reader is going to be to challenge that because I don't know you and, and I'm a cynical buyer out there in the market. So I'm going to go, bullshit, I don't believe this. So the next thing that you should do, if you can, is give me some credibility, right? Here's the companies that are utilizing our tool. Here's the white paper that proves what we do works. Here's like just here's the investors that have invested in our service. Here's here's your your friends or here's somebody that you know that vouches for us. Here's a reference. Give me something that gives your statement credibility, and then tell me what the next step is. Like what should I do now with this? What's our next step? And make it simple and easy for me. So first, you got me to read your email and open it because you used a powerful subject line. Next, you make sure that the content is really brief and to the point. And step number three is now you need to get me to respond to your email. You need to have a strong call to action. Every email you send needs a strong call to action. Again, seems so simple. It's basics, right? But it's the basics that make masters and make people excel uh, and do amazing things. It's getting the basics right. You wouldn't believe how many sales emails I see and read that lack a strong call to action. You can throw that email away. It's wasted. People will not come up with their response on their own. You need to stimulate that response. So make sure every email has a strong call to action. Make it clear that you're talking to me. Don't send an email to a generic group of people and, and say, you know, what do you guys think about this? Just talk to me, Steli. Do you have time on Thursday at 10 a.m.? for a 10-minute call to explore if this is a good fit. Steli, click this link to learn more about what we do. Or click this link to download this white paper. Just give me clear directions and talk to me. Um, el eliminate complexity uh, and, and kind of the, the paradox of choice. Um, don't ask open questions here. Don't tell me, do you think generally this might be interesting? That shouldn't be the last sentence of your email. The last sentence of your email needs to be really simple. Also, don't ask me, if you can, don't say when next week would be a good time or when uh, in the future would be a good time for us to talk. That now forces me to make a lot of decisions. Now I need to go into my calendar and now decide out of all dates and all times which one would be a good one to talk to you. That's too hard for me to do. Just give me a simple yes or no decision. Can you do Thursday 10 a.m. for 10 minutes? Now, all I have to do is look at Thursday 10 a.m. and decide if there's something in there or not and say yes or no. Make the call to actions really simple. And then, you know, as I alluded to, there's only two call to actions that you can have. Either I, I need to click a link or I need to and or hit a reply. Hit reply and answer a question of your request of yours, right? But make sure that every email you ever send out has a call to action. If you can, even your news newsletter should have call to actions, right? Tell me what to do with this. All right, and now that you, I opened your email because you had a strong subject line, I read your content because it was brief and personal and to the point, and I followed your call to action. You know, some people will follow your call to action, most people won't, so now you need to follow up with me. And here's the key question. What's your follow-up strategy? Ask yourself that question before you send the first email. Don't send emails and then be surprised that the majority of people will not reply, which is always going to be the case. And then ask yourself, what do we want to do with this? Should I follow up or not? That's backwards. You need to start with a follow-up strategy and then write the content for everything else. You know, the 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 game in sales is one with the follow-up you know following up is 60 percent of every deal you will close so make sure you have a follow-up strategy in place day one before you send the first email 
you know, personally, when I'm interacting with people and I want something from them, doesn't matter if it's investors, doesn't matter if it's the press, doesn't matter if it's customers or business development partners or potential hire, my personal follow-up strategy is very binary. I only accept a yes or a no. I follow up till I get that result. It once took me 36 follow-ups to an investor. So we had a, a warm introduction to an investor um, from a good friend uh, uh, of his, a really, you know, really prominent guy, a person you know, a product he developed, you're using. And he replied to that initial uh, introduction email and said, yes, I'd be interested in meeting up with you guys. So I replied and offered some times and dates and asked to meet. I didn't get a response. I follow up again. I didn't get a response. I follow up again. I didn't get a response. I followed up 36 times for well, probably a period of two months, 36 times till I got a reply. You know what the reply was? Shoot. Thanks for the follow up. How about tomorrow at 10 a.m.? We met with the guy and we raised the money, right? Uh, when people don't reply to me, to my emails. I don't take it personal. My decision, my, my philosophy is simple. Those people, are, they are busy. They're probably just too busy to reply. They probably don't have the time for it. So I'm going to keep reaching out till the right timing has arrived. And, and if somebody tells me, hey, fuck off, stop sending me emails, I'll stop. I'll respect people. I'm not going to bother them. But as long as they haven't told me what they're thinking, I'm going to keep reaching out to figure it out and get a result. So that's my personal follow-up strategy. It's pretty aggressive, but it works really well for me. Now, when it comes to the business, especially when it comes to more automated email, the follow-ups that you should send, you should be at least in the range between four to six follow-up emails before you give up on a lead or a potential customer and prospect. At least four to six follow-ups, all right? And then, you know, just a quick uh, uh, pro tip. Uh, personally, there are tools that you can use to kind of um, get automatic, automatic reminders to follow up in your inbox. Uh, one of them uh, that I've been using for a while is follow up that TCA can only recommend it. And soon, if you're close, close our customer, soon close our is going to have, you know, follow up reminders integrated. I can't wait for that day. It's going to, uh, you know, be pretty amazing. So again, the, all the basics, you start with a subject line, you kill it there, you write great content, a brief content, personal content, you have a strong call to action, and then you are even stronger in your follow-up, all right? If you make get all these right, you're on the path to greatness and you know, you're in the top 10%. Let's talk really briefly about outbound sales emails and a couple of things, a couple, couple of quick tips for you. Um, so first of all, I get asked a lot, hey, if we want to do outbound emails and we know who our target audience is, we know we have an amazing product, so we're not going to be spamming people uh, or we're not going to be bothering people with something that, that's not really great. When we know we have something amazing and we know exactly who the right person is, how do I get emails of those people? How do I generate leads for that? Um, and there's a quick hack that I want to share with you that is pretty effective. You know, how to get almost anyone's email address in, in a few very simple steps. First, you know, you use tools and you can change that up a little bit, but the, the two tools that I would use is LinkedIn and data.com. And what you do is you, you know, if you've identified the company or the title of individual that you want to reach out to and talk to about your service or product, you go to those services and you make a search and try to find either that individual directly or find um, kind of people that are related to that department uh, um, at all. And in LinkedIn, you'll get kind of very in-depth profiles, but you're not going to get any contact information. In data.com, you're not going to get a lot of um, profile details, and you're not going to get a lot of accurate data. About 30% of data.com data is probably outdated. Um, you know, People have moved on, different jobs are not working there anymore. Um, but what you're going to get from LinkedIn is kind of the depth of profile of the individual once you find them. What you're going to get at data.com is you're going to get kind of either the exact contact information or if not the exact contact information of the individual you want to reach out to, you're going to get the email um, syntax that this organization is using. And then if you have the sy contact syntax, you can just go and add Reportive, which is a, a, an add-on, an amazing add-on to your Gmail account. Um, and then type in variations of the email address and if nothing pops up on the right side on Reportive, it means that email address is probably not working. But the moment you hit the right email combination, you're going to see a profile pop up on the right side. And then you know that this email is valid. So if you want to reach, reach me, let's say, you know, Steli Afti at Closeio, 
Uh, you don't know my email address. You can go to data.com or LinkedIn and try to figure it out. And if you don't find it, you could even just open up your uh, inbox um, and then type in the, the uh, to field, you know, different variations of my e email address. You can just guess it and say, stellyfd at close.io. Nothing pops up. Stelly at close.io. You know, nothing pops up. S at close.io. Boom, my profile pops up. You know, that's the right email. Um, and if you have that process and you need to do it in large quantities, it's really easy to write up a, a quick document and outsource the entire process. Many, many startups do this really, really successfully. So this is a simple process of how to get almost anyone's email address that you want to reach out to. Use it carefully. Um, the other thing that I want to uh, point out to, especially when you do, um, you know, when you do enterprise sales, uh, is the whole concept of the cold email 2.0, um, you know, coined by the book Predictable Revenue by Aaron Ross. I mention that book a lot because it's an awesome book. I love Aaron. So I'm a big fan and we're good friends. So I always try to, to pitch that. If you haven't read that book, buy it today and read it. Um, the process that he developed for Salesforce to grow their enterprise sales unit to over 100 million in, in revenue a year is that instead of cold calling into the enterprise, they started doing cold emails. And the process was really simple. Um, you don't email directly the person you want to reach or is the decision maker for your product. You go one or two levels above that person and you ask for a referral down in the organization to the right person. If you keep the message brief, if you have a strong subject line, if your product is really good, you're going to get, you know, we've seen various results. We've done this for many, many startups and we've seen you know, between 10 to 30% success rates um, with those emails. So it's a lot more effective than cold calling right into the enterprise. Uh, if that's your target audience, um, then using email to kind of get warm referrals inside organizations is a really effective tool. Um, let's talk about and let's look into inbound sales emails a little bit. So let's, let's look at some examples of what other companies out there are doing. So the first example that I want to share is HubSpot because I'm a big fan of HubSpot. It's an awesome company. Uh, it's a B2B play. And then later I'm going to show you Trunk Club, which is a B2C play. And you'll see that the pattern of email that they write is really similar. Now, HubSpot does tons of emails. Like, I really strongly encourage you, it doesn't matter if you want to buy that product or not, you should sign up for a 30-day trial with HubSpot today, and then you need to track all the emails you're going to get. They're sending tons of emails. You're going to get like five to 10 trial tip emails with content on how to get the maximum out of your trial, which is more kind of a, a newsletter, uh, but still with an individual contact uh, uh, person. You're going to get included two newsletters with tons of content on how to do better marketing, and you're going to get drip, like individualized sales drips from a sales rep there. They're sending tons of emails and their emails are pretty good. So let's look at a couple of emails. So I signed up for a 30-day 30, 30 trial for HubSpot. What do I get? So first email that I get is a pretty like generic, hey, close out in HubSpot, you know, what's a good time to chat? Not the greatest subject line ever, but a good subject line, especially since I'm an inbound lead, you know, I kind of, they want to use my name, the company name, as well as their company name and tell me what this email is about. It's about scheduling a time to talk. So it's kind of very generic. Hey, here's what we do. It's a small video. And then you see when, when the call to action is asked, they don't give me a hundred different options. They say, hey, you know, when might be a good time to catch you at your desk for five minutes afternoon today or before 1130 a.m. ET tomorrow? So they offer me kind of an either or choice, but it's very specific and it's very timely. I sign up today, this morning, and they say, can we talk today or tomorrow, right? Not in a five weeks, right now. And then, you know, since HubSpot is, is, you know, they're still doing SMB, but they're doing large organizations that have bigger customers. They add a lot of material to their emails a lot, a lot of times so I can champion them within the org. So I have documents, PDFs, videos, tons of stuff that I can circulate within the organization to get buy-in and, and, and convince others that we should buy this product. Okay, so the first email, pretty generic. Hey, when do we want to chat? Second email, I don't respond to that. Second email, hey, you know, follow up to, to resources. So, I, you know, the, the person, uh, that sales individual at HubSpot called me since I didn't respond to that first email. We had a nice conversation. And then she sends me this as a, a follow-up. And this, to me, is too heavy in, in words, way too long. My, just my personal taste I don't like it. I'm sure HubSpot has tested the hell out of all their emails. Uh, they know what they're doing. So you always need to test and see what's right for your market. But uh, I would keep this shorter. But you see, again, this email is not all about giving me resources to champion. They know that the way they're selling uh, uh, in, in larger organizations is that they need 
a champion, that champion needs to get a lot of buy-in from other departments and other individuals. So they give me all that. They give me, at the end, you see kind of ROI metrics and say 2.7x increase in traffic over 12 months. They attach a ROI uh, uh, report and they give me all kinds of materials so that I can become a champion. All right, so I don't respond to that email. What happens next? Now, another email, not a great fan of that subject line, HubSpot and Closer, but, you know, I know what it's about. I know what uh, what this is. I, I would probably write this differently. Anyways, so we might make some improvements on the subject line, but what's the, the, the body of the text? This is actually really interesting and smart. So now this person is basically, the sales rep is telling me, hey, you know, yeah, oh, it left me a voicemail. Got tons of voicemails as well. So HubSpot calls you a lot, which I'm a big fan of. Uh, and, and then, you know, the, the, they... The rep presents me that with the fact that they're going to increase their prices. She, you know, she had internal discussions, you know, and, and, and tried to get kind of uh, and got a few discount codes. And she could give me a discount if I make a decision before a certain date and time. Um, now she even amps it up by telling me that one of her coupons is already spoken for, but the other one she would like to offer to me personally, right? How nice of her. Uh, I feel, you know, great. Now, you know, we can all smile and we all understand that this is a little bit of bullshit. If not a lot of bullshit, but it's effective bullshit, right? It's it's making this a very compelling offer. She tells me that there's a timeline where things are going to get more expensive. She gives me a, an easy way out by telling me that if I make a decision by a certain time, I'm going to get a great price. And she tells me that, you know, there's only one coupon that I can have if I respond right now. Right? That's pretty compelling. It's pretty clear that what I need to do is reply and make sure that I save that coupon to me. Uh, for me. Now, what did I do to this email? I personally ignored it. So I didn't, I didn't reply to that. What happens next? You know, I get a little follow-up email. And this subject line actually is great. Should I stay or should I go? I like that. You know, I immediately, some of those emails that uh, uh, the rep sent me, I didn't open immediately. This one I opened immediately. I was interested. I was curious to see what she would say. So it's all about like, hey, I'm, you know, I'm trying to be in touch with you, but you're ignoring me. So here's three choices. Either you're already good with what you're doing, so I should just stop bothering you. Or, you know, you, you just didn't have the time, didn't have to get back to me in, in case I'll keep bothering you if you tell me. And number three, and now, you know, the rap is being funny, you might have fallen off and, you know, you might be in a dangerous situation, so please let me know and I'll call 911 for you, right? The tongue in cheek, it's fun. It's like a very human way of saying, come on, man, I'm trying all this to get in touch with you. We're trying to make this work. Just give me something. Just reply and tell me what's going on. So I'll respectfully stop bothering you or we can make this happen, right? Really effective. Uh, what did I do? I ignored it. And then what happened uh, next? You know, I got this little email. Uh, thank you from HubSpot. You know, I was like, well, again, subject line, not the biggest fan. I'll show you another one that I like better that's kind of the same content. What's this about? Now she's basically telling me that, you know, they're breaking up with me, you know, that they're going to stop emailing me. Uh, so, you know, we tried all these things to make this relationship work, but you clearly are not invested in this. You're clearly are not replying and don't want to hear. So, you know, I'm going to stop reaching out to you. I'm going to stop trying. If you ever want to come around, you know, we're always uh, open and happy, but I'm not going to work hard anymore to try to talk to you and communicate with you. This is really effective, right? Now, this this is the, the only email that actually got an emotional response from me where, you know, it was, and, and again, I know this is a drip email. I do this for a living, but still I was slightly pissed and very compelled to reply. And I had to Strongly keep my, you know, strongly keep my emotional household on the balance to not immediately reply to this, but I wanted to. And and I've got this email, and I'll show you another example. Um, a lot of times, and you know, out of all the emails that I showed you, which one did I end up at the end of the day replying to? Exactly this one, the one that she, where the rep took away the deal from me, the, where the rep said, "I'm offering, I'm offering, offering. Now I'm going to take away." And taking away is really effective in human psychology. You take something away and I immediately want it. Uh, if you want proof of that, go to small children and just take something random away from them. doesn't matter how uninteresting it is to them. You're going to get all their attention. They're going to want that thing, you know, no matter what. All right. So this is the sequence that HubSpot is sending. Very large clients, B2B, right? Let's look at a different example. Trunk Club, right? That's a B2C Startup, you sign up there, and then you they send you a pack full of expensive clothes, and you have a kind of a personal stylist. So this is for like, you know, professionals and 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 people that are really um, busy uh, but still want to look good, right? So you sign up for them. Here's what you get from them: 
first email, you know, important information on your first shipment, right? That's not a bad, that's actually a, a better subject line. I like it because it's important information that has shipment, you know, so I might look into that. And then, you know, the person introduces herself, you know, and asks, you know, when can we talk? What's a good time? What did you hear about us? To me, that email is a, a good subject, but a, a weak call to action, right? Now here, how did you hear about Trunk Club? Ask me that question in person. I'm not going to write this. Uh, and, and you're watering down your call to action by asking me multiple things. And then what's a good day, time to chat? No, you tell me. Give me a date and time so I can say yes or no. And if I say no, then you can give me another time, right? But overall, an, a good first email. Second, I don't reply to that. Second email. Steli, now it's personal, right? Now they're using my name. It's your stylist at Trunk Club, right? Now the first one was more of a welcome. Now it's personal. Awesome, cool. All right, so again, the same thing. Hey, you know, let's chat. We just need five to 10 minutes. You know, what would work? Um, again, call to action, I would like a specific date and time, but I like the subject line a lot better, right? What do I do here? I ignored it. What happens next? I get this email. Trunk Club, still interested? Again, that's a great, that's a great subject line. It has a question. It tells me that, hey, you know, this person, it suggests that a human being wonders if it's being ignored or if I'm interested or not. It's really hard to, to ignore that. You know, I kind of understand. I've been there myself. So we never want just to keep somebody hanging. It um, makes us feel bad. So here again, the person's like, hey, are you still interested in this? Should we chat? Just let me know, right? And what do I do? I ignore it. And what happens next? Goodbye from Trunk Club. I actually like the subject line. Again, this is the email that I opened immediately. This is also the email that got a reply from me. Interesting, right? Do you see a pattern? Like first few are very generic. Hey, how's it going? Can we make this happen? Next few are like, hey, I'm wondering, you know, why don't I hear something from you? And then it goes, you know what? I offered it a million times. Now I'm taking it away. Goodbye. I'm going to stop bothering you. Right. And which ones get a reply? Those last ones, the ones where it's like, now we're closing the door. The deal is about to, to leave. I'm going to lose my chance to interact with them and buy the product. So here I feel compelled to reply. So, you know, this was the email that got me to say, hey, you know, great drip email. Yes, let's jump on a call and talk. Um, right. So, and I'm going to share those templates with you guys in an email as a follow up. So, quick checklist, right? Sales email checklist. Uh, and I'm going to send this checklist to you as well. Are you sending enough emails? Again, coming circling back to what I said at the beginning, you're probably not sending enough emails. Starting today, start sending more emails. Use the power of email to communicate with people and get them to reply and response and get them at the right time to jump on a call, click a link, or follow an action and engage with you. Um, the next uh, uh, checkpoint is, how, you know, are the subject lines that we're using really, really strong? You know, are we tracking open rates? Do we get enough open rates? Um, the next checklist is, are we keeping the content brief? Are we including a strong call to action at the end of the email? And then are we following up at least two, two times, you know, with, with the initial emails that we're sending out? And last but not least, what are all the email tools that we're using? Are we using, are we sending personal emails, drip emails, newsletter emails, and autoresponders? If not, do it. Use all of these tools. You know, companies like HubSpot and Trunk Club know why they do it. Um, if you've signed up, and you probably signed up for, for Closer, and many of you are Closer.io customers, you know that you got drips from us, you know that you are getting newsletters from us, and you know that we are promoting our autoresponder with the email course that I, that I mentioned earlier in the presentation. So utilize all tools, right? Now, a, a few last things before we go into Q&A about how we integrated email into Close.io and, and why we believe it's the best email integration in sales software out there, period. First and foremost, we know that all email communication needs to be with your customers and potential leads need to be automatically tracked with no manual data entry, copying and pasting, or BCCing on your part. When you start close out, your Closeout account, you can put in your SMTP and IMAP credentials, your email credentials on your email server, and no matter where you send those emails, you know if you send them out of Close.io, out of your email inbox, or any other tool, they automatically are being tracked and pulled into the lead profiles so that the entire organization can have a timeline of all communication that ever happened with a specific customer or lead. Right. Next one is we have email templates, productivity boost. You need to use email templates for quick follow-ups, for scheduling calls, for the 
you know, after demo email, uh, whatever you do, you, you need to think about your entire sales process and think what kind of emails do your sales reps send again and again, write them up as templates in close out, share them with the entire org. Then if you send uh, emails within uh, close out, we can actually tell you what the open rates are. Right? We can give you stats on how effective your emails are so that you can start improving them. And I'm sure that in the Q&A section, somebody's going to ask me, what are good open rates? What are good response rates? And they vary through industries, and we can talk about that a little bit. But the key fact is it doesn't really matter where you are and begin with. The key fact is to track progress. You know, Whatever your open and click-through rates or response rates are today, they are what they are. The goal should be to keep improving them every month, every quarter, every year. Uh, and then because we track everything and we make it available and visible to everyone, uh, we give real context. So, you know, if a sales rep or customer development rep talk, sends a couple of leads to somebody and then a sales rep talks to somebody and then it escalates up to a, a sales manager or even the director of sales, you can search for that lead, go to the page and see all email communication combined. Doesn't matter if it was from your, from somebody else. Uh, and then last but not least, because Closeout is so tightly integrated when it comes to email, we are able to give you the power of search in a way that no other tool out there gives you. In Closeout, because all your email communication is tracked automatically, you can ask a question and say, Closeout, show me all leads that have an active opportunity that I have emailed more than a week ago and have never gotten a response back yet. Those are the people that I want to follow up with. You can type that query into the search box and it will give you an up-to-date list of here's the 5, 10, 30, 100 active opportunities that you've reached out to via email and have replied, go and send another email, or reply, give them a call, right? All right, so uh, enough of, about uh, sales emails. I hope this gave you a really good and strong overview. I'm now excited to jump into the Q&A session and hear what kind of questions you guys had about uh, uh, sales emails and we'll go through them one by 